Welcome clowns to a new arena tier list. Today we will focus on unique units and we will focus on them on clown arena. The reason for clown arena is that uh, it feels like the unique unit balance uh, is a bit different there. Simply the distance or the main difference between clown arena and arena is that the distance between the players is a bit shorter on clown arena. What it means that you it will lead to a bit more aggression and therefore unique unit opening in castle age followed by some aggression forward with mangonals and the unique unit uh, will be a bit more efficient than on normal arena therefore we simply see more unique unit, unique unit openings there also in imp this uh, the situation is completely swept because on arena again you have a bit more time because of the distance is a bit longer between the players therefore you will see more unique unit openings there uh, while on clown arena you might have to start with something else which is cheaper to produce uh, something like arbalest bbc's and then you might want to transition into your unique unit afterwards so that's the reason also second thing is that we have now masters of arena 6 tournament happening we are in the middle of it still sick players are are in the tournament and clown arena is the map version that we are using there for it um, Another thing is that uh, we are considering the unique unit usage. Because basically, it's impossible for us to say if uh, one unit is stronger than the other because uh, some unit is stronger in Castle Age, some in Imp, and you cannot really compare those. So what we are instead focusing on is how fundamental the civilization, uh, the unique unit is for the civilization. Sometimes you will see the unique unit as the main thing that uh, the civilization cannot really work with it without it but sometimes you will see it as just an option and you might even have better options than going for the unique units. I think you will get more idea when we jump into the tier list, so let's go for it. Uh, we have their template prepared. We will have their five categories and yeah, let's see. So first unit that we will start with is a Jaguar Warrior, basically a unit that you should never see. Um, it feels like uh, champion is simply a way better unit. Uh, you, it's so much easier to get into champions. And uh, after all, if you would say Jaguar Warrior is a bit better against infantry, maybe, but for that you have uh, with Aztecs Arbalest monks as well. So I would say most of the time you want to be playing champions. And um, yeah, Jaguar Warrior basically a unit that has, I would say, zero usage to me, almost. Uh, Kimmel Archer, that's a bit different story. For Berberis, it's... Um, uh, absolutely different situation because uh, Kimmel Arch is extremely important for them. It's the unit that they want to play in, maybe in, even in Castle Age, you can be aggressive with Kimmel Archers and potential Mangonels and pushing your opponent with, uh, this way. That's absolutely an option. Also, you can be playing with Kimmel Archers some kind of aggression, especially if you are facing, let's say, some uh, help Siege on Nature saves, then uh, it makes sense with Berberis to be quite aggressive. For that, again, like 1TC plays, Kimmel Archers are quite solid in those situations. And obviously in Imp, you simply want to transition into Kimmel Archers very, very fast with Berberis because it's basically your best unit. Um, Longbowman. Obviously Longbowman is really good unit. Uh, but the thing is that you have Arbalest as Britons. And Arbalest as Britons is amazing unit on its own that you most of the time don't really need to switch into Longbowman, which is a better unit, but simply for that you need castles, needs time, and it feels like Arbalest feels like the better choice most of the time. However, if you have the castles, if you have the resources, and you have there some Arbalest number, surely it's better to start producing Longbowman instead of more Arbalest, but uh, that's a bit different situation. So Longbowman, solid, you want to potentially get to them in long term, but... Uh, Opening with them in the short term, not really. In Castle Age, you'll likely have crossbows, which are better. You don't need a castle, so your ego will be better, and so so and so. So Longbowman will only stay as a B tier there for me. Um, I, I always forget the name of the unit, Konik. All right. So uh, Konik is only for me a C tier unit because uh, it feels like uh, going for Cavaliers is mostly the better choice for you. For Konings, you need so much time to get the mass of them. You need the castles, you need all the cavalry upgrades, you need the unique, unique unit uh, or the, the elite upgrade. And yeah, it simply takes so much time to get to this unit. Obviously, basically zero usage in Castle Age. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I delete this Iconic as a unit as well. So it will only be a C tier for me. I can see usage for it if you have the resources for it, but most of the time I, I could even justify Iconic putting as D tier, to be honest. But it's I, I see there little usage compared to no usage of Chego Warrior. Uh, Costelier, that will be a B tier. It's a pretty strong unit. I would say mostly better than Paladins with uh, Burgundians, but the reason for them only being B tier, again, you need castles, and feels like Paladin, especially with Custodians given the, the price, it's not the strongest unit, but you can get it way faster than you can mass some good amount of Custodians. Therefore, for me, um, yes, once again, if you have the resources, if you have the castles, you can switch into them, but I would say, you have quite a good option, even if you are not going for Castelliers, so not really crucial in it for the civilization for me. Um, Arambais. I could, I, I could even put them as S tier. I would say A tier would fit them a bit more. Uh, the thing is that you don't really want to be going for Arambais in Imp, because in Imp uh, it's not a strong unit, but other than that, in Castle Age, uh, great unit can easily push and you can even win the game You're just going for Arambais. Although they are a bit, uh, bit nerfed recently, so you cannot just play double castle arm bias and expect to win everyone with that. But still, uh, another thing is that uh, not only the unit on its own is good, but Burmese like to go monk rush and arm bias is such a good fit into this play. Because if you are going for monks, basically your biggest counter is uh, light caves. And if you have there a couple of arm bias, then you can trade against those quite well. It doesn't cost food, so for that Arambais, again, quite a good option for you and um, yeah, feels like a, quite a good fit into the civilization. Uh, Cataphract. I will put it as B tier. I think there is one great usage of, all, I mean, other than if you are playing versus uh, infantry civilization, there is one more great usage for Cataphract. Um, Byzantines who mostly want to open with something like Skirmisher, Arbalest, PPCs, that might turn or uh, that might force open to play some skirmishes as well. And uh, in this situation, this is a perfect uh, situation for you when you want to be switching into cataphracts because opponent might, let's say, start with skirmishes, want to play Hassar afterwards, and against all that, your cataphract should work really well. So I would say cataphract, this is the perfect usage for them. If they, if you want, you don't want to start with them most of the time, but you want to get into them a bit later. Uh, votes might be surprising, but I will put them as S tier. Uh, Celts, especially on Clown Arena, don't really work without if, uh, without votes, I would say. And even Celts can work really well in Castle Age. Uh, the thing is that this situation is uh, when you are being monk rushed and uh, you have heresy. And votes is, votes is, uh, are units that uh, you can spam really fast, they are pretty cheap. And they trade really well against like monk rushing. So uh, if you can afford the numbers and if you have heresy and such and such. But for that, I would say Celts uh, have their, their unit is already usable in Castle Age. And obviously in AMP, you mostly want to play the unique unit. It's so strong there, basically. So this is why for me, it will be S tier. Chukonu, uh, this is a unit that I can justify even maybe putting as S tier as well. But yeah, I mean, you can start with Arbalest. I would say sometimes you want to be even start with Chikonus. Quite a strong unit. Um, really important for Chinese, basically. Chikonus, Light Caves, quite a strong composition that you want to get with Chinese. And yes, you might be starting with Arbalest, but I would say uh, Chikonus should be the unit that you want to transition very, very fast into. Um, then we have their Kipchak. Um, Really crucial unit for for Cumans, in fact. So we can even put them in S tier, I believe. Let, let's really put them in S tier. I, I had them in A tier first, but yeah, let, let's put them S tier. Um, really good unit in Castle Age potentially. Um, if you because they are really good against monks, against mangonels, against siege, even against cavalry. So you can micro them really nicely. And therefore, keep check a uh, pretty strong unit in Castle Age already. And we know how humans like to play 2TC fast imp. And if we, in that situation, they only can afford uh, keep checks most of the time. So for that, they also work really well. Also, in the very late imp, they are really cheap gold wise. They cost like 35 gold. Uh, so 
um, yeah, affording those units uh, in the long term and getting the mass of them is not really tough. And yeah, uh, feels like quite a quite a good option for you most of the time. Um, Shuttle Warrior. If you would be frequent on my stream, you would know that Shuttle is amazing unit, but. Um, it's not as amazing. I mean, we will put it on B tier with those other units. Again, I would say similar situation as uh, if you are playing Byzantines. You can play with Arbalest with Ethiopians or like Skirmishers. You can force opponent to play Skirmishers as well. And that's a perfect situation for you when you want to be transitioning into Shuttle Warriors. Because against Trash, they will simply perform really well, is really easy to spam, and you can outmaster your opponent with them really, really nicely. In those situations so shuttle warrior quite a good unit for you and um, can surely decide the games but again not a unit that you want to be really using in castle age not a unit that you want to be using in early imp as well not something you want to be starting with starting with most of the time x-men mm, surely a tier um the thing is that they are so good with like how frank's army is working for Paladins, they are such a great support. You can even start with them. Sometimes they even work really nicely on their own if you are facing like uh, infantry in infantry civilizations like Gods, for example. So yeah, X-Men, uh, absolutely crucial unit for Franks. Uh, amazing in Thresh Wars, pretty easy, uh, pretty cheap gold-wise. So also easy to mass, therefore, even in the long term. So X-Men for me, definitely A tier. Um, Husk, basically S tier unit. A bit, it might feel weird because uh, it's not a unit that you want to see most of the time but for gods is the only way how they can deal with Arablast basically and therefore you basically want to be going for those units quite often also gods uh, or like husks perform quite well against hand cannons and uh, therefore a unit that you want to be going for almost in every situation with uh, goats, at least we want to have them as an option. Obviously, sometimes we want to be transitioning into champs or into halves as well. But having husk is uh, absolutely crucial. Also for goats, uh, one of their potential gameplays could be that they are going for some boom. And then they are mass making castle, making anarchy, making some petards and just trying to go for full castle age spam against opponent who potentially might not expect it and to win the game this way. So this is another great usage of husks in castle age already. Um, Husk simply really good unit for gods. Tarkan straight to C tier. Um, unit with little, us little usage for me. Paladin is better unit. Uh, you can get to Tarkan speed cheaper, so sometimes it would be low on resources, but you can afford Elite Tarkan and you have more address as well. You can get the spam of quite a strong cavalry units, but yeah, the, the usage is really limited and uh, simply Paladin is mostly the better choice for you as Hans. Kamehuk, completely different story, very important for Incas. Um, great so, <laughs> unit that I like to say is great against cavalry, infantry, and archers. Um, again, a bit tricky to open with them. Also, against like the early Arbalest numbers, you likely won't be afford, able to afford all the updates for Kameux, so that might not be optimal for you. But also, with Incas having cheaper castles, it's easier to get the castles up to get the spam of Kameux, and in the long term, potentially your best unit as Incas. So Incas will only be A tier for me, but yeah, it's a unit that you want to be playing with Incas basically in most of the situations. Indians, uh, well, if I would be in our Dark Nope, I would put them like here, but um, for me, it's a B tier unit. Similar situation as the other units there. You don't want to open with them. You want to start with something else. But if you have the resources for them afterwards, switch into Elephant Archers. They are really, really strong units if you can get a mass of them, which is obviously not really easy and not something you can afford in early imp. Another unit there, Genoese Crossbowman, that's A tier unit for me. Uh, sometimes you can even uh, justify opening with them. I would say mostly you will see opening with, let's say, Condottieros or Arbalest, but then in the long term with uh, Italians, basically no matter what, you want to be playing um, Chinese crossbowmen and Hassar against most of the situation, against most of the civilizations, against most of the unit compositions. So again, some of the story, maybe starting with something else, but you want to transition into Chinese crossbowmen very, very fast. 
Um, Samurai. Uh, I think it will be A tier for me. Uh, Again, maybe not as you needed to want to be starting with most of the time, but also basically zero usage in Castle Age. But they feel really strong if, and they are real easy to mass. They even perform well against archers. I think you can even justify it as unique to start with in some situations. And uh, also, once again, a Japanese civilization that will likely start with Arbalest or Skirmishers. Uh, might force opening into playing something like skirmishes or hazards against it and then samurais again will perform really really well against those so samurai is really important for japanese i think unit that you want to be playing most of the time and they will be eight year for me uh ballist elephants um one of my favorite units um and yeah i think i will put them in b tier might sound weird but uh, i would say they have really good usage for khmer Khmer don't have really great units uh, in the long term, especially uh, units that they want to be spending gold on. And Ballist Elephant, I think, is the best unit for that. So, while it's not a great unit, I think it's a really good option for Khmer in the long term. Uh, but again, they likely will start with something like Arbalest, maybe Siege Rams, Hussar, but then switching into Ballist Elephants makes a lot of sense for them. Also, Khmer have amazing uh, farm eco most of the time, so therefore, Affording ballast elephants should be an option here. Um, War wagon. Mm, I would say a tier, unique unit that you can even afford in uh, castle age, and they can do really well there. Obviously, they are a bit weak to monks because they only have six range. They are quite expensive, so monks should perform quite well against them. Also, you don't need redemption against War Wagon, unlike, well, let's say, against Organ Guns. So, that's uh, another reason why, why War Wagons aren't as amazing in Castle Age, but they are really good support for, like, some YOLO plays by Koreans, which are absolutely legit. And also, in Imp, um, you want to be switching into War Wagons very, very fast. Once again, maybe not the unit that you want to be starting with in Imp, but something you want to transition into, rather, just because of its uh, very high price. And because uh, also of the need of castles. Then we have their latest. Uh, I personally really loved latest, but it feels like people realized how to play against them. They, they, that simply helps is not really the best choice sometimes. Also on Cloud Arena, you cannot get the mass of, um, of latest as easily as on Arena, right? So maybe you need it might even drop to CT category for me. I feel like on Cloud Arena, Paladin is mostly the better choice with Lithuanians. Sure, if you have your resources, if you can afford latest afterwards, they are so much more cost efficient than Paladins. Um, unless opponent has lots of archers, which is also an option. Uh, it's really a unit for me that would be between B and C tier. Uh, I think we can even go to C tier with them. And they are strong. They, they are quite a strong unit, but simply... You have Paladins. And it's not really easy to get the mass of like this on, on Clown Arena. Then we have their... Magyar Hazar uh, B tier. I would say most of the time you want to be standing with Hazar other than Magyar Hazar. Or like you want to be starting with heavy CA with Magyars mostly, then you want to transition into Hussar. If you still have resources, you can transition into Magyar Hussar again as well. Is uh, something you, if you can afford it, surely you need that you want to go for. But it's not a crucial part of Magyar army, I would say. Karambit Warrior, uh, quite a similar story um, as I would say, for example, Shuttles. So you want to be starting with, let's say, French army, mostly with Malai, and then you can potentially transition into Karambits. They are really cheap, obviously take only half of the population, so it's pretty easy to mass them even if you don't have uh, too much population space left. And yeah, I feel like Karambit is a unit that is important for Malai in some situations, but Malai are simply really strong even without it, if they can just play Arbalas BBCs due to their, and with their amazing imp time. Um, Kibero, uh, I, would, I would put them in C tier, some usage, they also can work 
a bit if you're going for Monk Rush with Malian, so some Kbedos in the back, like just dealing with, for example, Light Gifts again, they can do something for you, but yeah, it's, a, it's a bad unit in Castle Age, it's a bad unit in Imp. The reason why they are not D tier is because Malians uh, don't have many great options in Imp, it feels. Uh, still, still Kbedo is only C tier for me. I think the unit is uh, quite weak, really. Uh, Plumped Archer, obviously extremely important for Mayans, we can only put it as A tier. I could even put him as C tier. And I think I think it's uh, the better option. Like, basically with Mayans, you want to be playing two units, uh, Plumped Archers and Eagles. So, yeah, you can play them in Castle Age, although in Castle Age, Plumped Archers aren't that amazing. They are quite exposed to Mangonels, for example. Um, Still in him, it's an uh, absolutely crucial part of Mayan army. Yeah, I think I think Plum Archer should be an S tier. Really important for the civilization. As I said, Castle Age may be not the best option, but early imp, absolutely amazing. And late imp as well, if you can micro them and if the opponent doesn't have huge energy numbers, then Plum Archers will perform really well against almost anything. My good idea, it's a very simple uh, situation. First of all, you can even use them really nicely in Castle Age because they also perform nice against uh, Mangonels or like against Siege in general and also against Monks. So opening with them in Castle Age and being very aggressive, different line option, especially if you are facing tough matchup like versus Ethiopians versus Italians, I would say going very aggressive with Mongols and Mangudais makes a lot of sense. And obviously in Imp, Mongols are basically nothing without their Mangudai. So Mangudai um, is a synonym for Mongols. For me, uh, I I really like uh, War Elephants, but even despite all this, I have to put them only in C tier. Um, tough to find the usage for for the unit, really. Uh, Paladin is mostly a better option. Unit is really expensive, even though it got a bit cheaper in the latest balance patch. But yeah, they are still really expensive, and they are still dying really badly to halps. Which most of the which you mostly see against Persians, anyways. Uh, also, they are really bad against monks. They may be the worst unit in the game um, against monks. So yeah, I, I think we can put them in C tier and they should be happy about it. But I love war elephants. Organ guns. Uh, that's straight to C. Uh, that's straight to S tier even. Uh, the thing is that they are really good with how Portuguese work. Uh, you can play organ guns and then go like really fast one TC imp and then you can drop Fatorias or you can go even more aggressive with organ guns. Also organ guns, you need uh, you need redemption to convert them. Therefore, they will perform really well against civilizations that don't have redemption. In fact, and yeah, organ guns definitely have to be S tier. So crucial for the civilization to work well. In imp, I would say even. Uh, you, you can see them a lot in Imp as well, although in Imp it feels like Portuguese have some other great options, but especially in Castle Age, really dominant unit that you want to be playing a lot. Uh, Saracens and Mamelux. Well, no, no, no. I will put them... I, I have issues putting them in the same category as Latis, but I have issues putting them in the same category as uh, Jaguar Warrior. Feels like I would need one more. No, no, no. I will put them in D tier. Maybe you can find one usage of Mamelux, but they are so, so expensive. Uh, if you are going for Monk Crash with Saracens and you have a castle, doing some Mamelux against uh, Light Caves could really help you, but it's literally the only usage I can think of. Mamelux are really, really bad units and they have very little usage. At least on Clown Arena. Uh, Sturgeons. Now, this is another tricky scenario. I think we can justify putting them in S A tier and S tier. Both would be quite legit there. Let's go. Let's go. S tier, I guess. Uh, because they are really important for Sicilians. Sicilians doesn't feel like the strongest uh, strongest unit in the game, and a Sicilian, uh, like the strongest uh, Sith in the game. And yeah, that's because First Crusade you can afford uh, lots of 
sergeants also can make the dungeon so it's easier to mass them they are quite str quite strong so yeah i think it's the is many times the best option that city lands have therefore we will put them in s tier also you can go for like some kind of dungeon rush already in feudal age or castle age so the unit has really wide range of usage boyar will be straight to c tier you have basically better options than boyar Oh, maybe even D tier, honestly. I feel like C tier is... You, you can find usage for them, but uh, yeah. They, they are still... Even with all their high... Or all their great uh, meal armor, they are still dying horribly to helps. So... There's the main issue here. I think yeah, C tier is kind of okay with them. Kongs, straight to a, S tier. Obviously, really sick so, uh, unit there. Castle Edge can decide the games. Not really a strong in imp. Um, you can play elite kongs, but it's not really that great unit given its cost. But uh, in Castle Age, they can absolutely decide the game, and we saw it a couple of times in Masters of Ring Essex already. So that will be S. Uh, Keshik, potentially A for me. Really good unit that you want to be transitioning into, really fit into uh, Tatar gameplay, I would say mostly. Um, that will be, I guess, I guess C tier for Teutonic Knights. Uh, I would say Champion. Well, once again, it's better to play Champions mostly. You can find some usage for uh, Teutonic Knights though. If uh, especially in the Trash Wars, there is may maybe the best unit for the Trash Wars in the game. But I, I would say Champions is most of the time the better choice for Teutons. Also, you have so many great options how to spend your gold. The Teutonic Knight is basically on the last place for two turns. Um, but yeah, I think we can find some usage for them. Well, I, and you know, I will put them in D tier anyways. They suck. Janissary may be the best unit in game. Amazing in Castle Age. It's really, really tough to stop the unit in Castle Age. And uh, obviously really works well with third gameplay with the fast imp. Uh, like Janissary into Bombard Cannons uh, fast imp play. So yeah, Genesis Ray absolutely has to be S tier. So strong civilization, especially on Clone Arena. Clone Arena and that is mainly because of this unit. So they have to be S tier. Rotten Archer should be A tier. Um, once again, you might be opening with something like Arblast or Elite Skirm or Imp Skirms even with Vietnamese, but then transitioning into Rattans should make a lot of sense. Really strong unit for its cost. Uh, absolutely, you, sh you should be transitioning into them very, very soon in Imp. And last thing, Zergs, I think we can put them here as well. Uh, you can even play full Zergs with Vikings because of their strong eco. And Zergs perform really well against even archers, obviously against cavalry, against infantry. The thing is that it's tough to get uh, the numbers of them fast enough in early imp because you need the castles. And also they have basically zero usage in castle age. So this will be uh why they will why we'll put them in a tier only and this is my tier list uh, i think this is basically how you should see the unit uh, how how likely it is that you will see the unit in game s tier should be that you will see the unit basically every game um a tier potential something that you want to transition into uh wherever early on in him b tier is more like unit that you might transition into but you have really good options anyway so Maybe you can, if you have the resources, you can transi transition into them. C tier is the units that you find little, little usage for, at least on Clone Arena. And they are basically units that you should almost never see in game. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you very, very soon with a new video. So see you.